Brother Evans asked me if I'd fill in for him today. I told him that's a great responsibility to do something like that. So, and he said, you, you'll be all right, sir. You guys pray for me. But you know, the message of love, it's awesome, isn't it? That's what it's all about. That's what all her singing was about today is that message of love. God's love for us that He gave His only begotten Son. We approach that week that we celebrate. He died upon that cross. What a message it is. Mary asked me last night, she said, well, what are you going to speak on? And I said, getting saved and being saved. I can't think of anything. That's what she said. Well, I can't think of nothing no better than that. And I said, that's right. There's nothing greater that ever happened in my life than the day that I was saved. It's so important. I look back now how important that day was. Is when I turned it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. When I went to Him. When I humbled myself and went to God. And said, help me, Lord. Because I can't do nothing about it anymore. And, and that's what the, the message today is about. And we touched on a few things over the Sunday school class. That's what we did. And I've I got to get this out here. But uh, we're going to be in Matthew 18. Chapter 1. You know, I'm used to Sunday school class, and I got that book, you know, that really, really helps. You can depend upon it. You know, you can look, and it gives you advice, and helps you, and leads you, and guides you, and gives you words and wisdom from years gone by from where they put that together. Today, you know, it's a little different. I didn't have that book to depend on, so I scribbled a few things down as I went. I want to talk about today is the little children. The little children. The, uh, I was thinking about the little, the little child who was just perfect with the message today. My care when Lisa came forward and just cried and cried and cried. See, the little children depend upon love. But I've not been a good love person all my life. But the little children totally depend upon love. That little baby cried probably all the time that she was gone until she got back here and settled it down. That's what little children are. They depend upon solely on love. We're bad about depending upon ourselves too much if we get older and grow older. Think about Sherry McRoberts this morning. Her little grandbaby had left a message with her that said, you be sure and tell Papa Charlie that I'm sick and I want him to pray for me. And she shared that, you know, with Mary and shared it with me and I want to share it with you. Little children understand a lot more than we ever realize. And that's what... God wants us to become as little children. You know, to humble our hearts and, and to look and, and seek after someone who loves us more than we can love ourselves. Loves us more than anyone can, can be loved. That's it's, it's beyond me. I'll go ahead and start reading. Chapter 18, verse 1. It says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and said, and set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as, little, as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one of such little child, in my name receiveth me. The Lord wants us to come just like that. If, let's look at a child for a minute. I wrote some things down. Mark 10, 15 says this, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Now, we're, we're saying, now, there's a time of, of accountability for children. There's, Little children, before they're of age accountability, they're going to heaven. Let's look at why. And see, let's, let's look at this first of all. It, it's not about their works. So many in the world today, so many maybe even in the church today, have convinced themselves, as long as I go out and do these good works, I'm a good person all my life. That's not about that. It's not about their works. It's so often they get that in their head. Little children, see, they're so young, it's not about any works that they do. You know, they are they're already in a place where we need to be dependent upon love. We've got to truly depend upon love. We cannot count 
upon our great works. We can't count on what we can do to make heaven. Because a little child, even though he's not even of accountability age, it has nothing to do with him going to heaven. He can't make it. If, if, if a little child was in a position where it was a choice, that wouldn't be the choice. He couldn't do it. it, it there's no way that you can make heaven dependent upon what you do and how good a person you are. Little children, something about little children is they don't live in the past. Did you ever see a little fella just do something and mommy or daddy had just to scold him real good? He didn't, he didn't, that didn't even, you know, yeah, at that minute it was terrible for him, but he didn't lay down and quit. He just kept on going with his life. He got past that. He never, never, and he could have held that against his mommy or daddy, and he'd never he'd been mad at them and never spoke to it. They go on, don't they? See, we're, we've got a tendency that we live. I, I've lived in the past before. It's not a very good place because we can't change the past. Uh, that that's the problem with a lot of people in this world today is they live in the past. They think I've got to fix that. I can't do nothing. I, I how can I make heaven because the things that I've done. They can't forgive themselves. They've got themselves in a shape. I've been there. they got themselves in a shape where they cannot forgive themselves because of their past. They've just locked themselves in there. There's a verse. Isaiah uh, 43. It's 18 and 19. And Isaiah says this, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and the desert. God wants us to not dwell on the past. God don't want us to live in the past. He wants us to get back of that. Well, how do we do that? We have to humble ourselves. We have to change our heart, let our heart be changed. We have to look at something and get our mind somewhere else besides on the past. Because if you, it can't be changed. Let me read a couple of things a couple of uh, uh, ministers said. Uh, Ed Young, he, this is his quote. He said, You cannot restore your relationship with God and cannot restore mine. We cannot change the past. God has done what you and I could not. He sent His Son to be a peace offering. That, that he, He's the peace offering that it requires to be forgiven of your past. See, you can't fix your past. You can't say it didn't happen. So there's no use dwelling there. We can't let the past hinder our relationship with God. You know, I, there's people hurt, been hurt very bad by other people. But you can't hold on to that. You can't change it. You've got to let that go. There's people that's hurt other people very bad and they, they think, how, what can I do? I mean, I've done that. I've done such a bad thing. I've not been good. I've not been a good father, maybe. I've not been a good person to someone else. I've really done things. I mean, it can be a ter as terrible as terrible can be. And they can't get past it. If you humble yourself as a little child, a little child gets past it. Franklin Graham said, he said, the devil, and listen to this, the devil keeps so many of us stuck in our weakness. He reminds us of our past when we ought to, to remind him of his future. <coughs> Amen? He doesn't have one. See, Satan doesn't have a future. We've got one. We've got promises. We, the, if we accept the Lord into our life, we have a promise. Yes, through this life, we're going to have our sufferings, our trials and tribulations. We're no different than the lost. But you know what makes this difference? We have humbled ourselves as a little child. We have come to the Lord without all this. We'll carry it to the cross and we leave it there. We are renewed spiritually. See, but that's what we have to do. We have to bring it to God. We've got to bring it to Him when we're in this situation where we can't get over the things we've done. 